Hello, this is SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com coming to you from a windy and stormy Southern California afternoon uh, where I have uh, almost finished um, restoring this Harp Omni 2 synthesizer. Uh, everything on it is working now. Uh, what's left to do is calibrate it. And uh, I figured that it would be helpful to put a video out there to show people how to calibrate these synthesizers, or at least how I do it. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to start with uh, is the uh, power supply. Um, always want to make sure that the voltages of your power supply are correct before moving on to anything else. Um, so I've taken my multimeter here and I've connected the red lead to the uh, plus 15 to where the uh, to the header where this uh, wire from the power supply connects on this board here. This is the lower voicing board and this is the main entry point of power into the uh, electronics of the synthesizer. So I'm measuring the voltage there uh, with my multimeter and I'm reading 14.96 volts. So I can adjust, I mean it's, it's probably fine to leave it at that, but I like to have things all dialed in perfectly. Uh, so there's two trimmers on the power supply, one in the back and one in the front. And you can uh, adjust the one in the back to adjust the plus 15 volt rail and uh, just nudge it very slowly and uh, there uh, it's now 15 volts so I can take the uh, red lead of my multimeter and then clip it on here to the uh, negative 15 volt rail and uh, this one is reading negative 15.01 volts so the trimmer to adjust the negative 15 volt rail is here in the front and uh, just very carefully nudge it down there and now it's negative 15 volts so the power supply is is dialed in now and we can move on to other adjustments so the next item that we're going to calibrate is the what they call VCF CVR that's the voltage controlled filter control voltage rejection so it's the offset to the control voltage to the filter and this is the patch that uh, ARP recommends in the service manual that you use. You have the uh, ADSR all the way up and decay three quarters of the way up and everything else all the way down. And it doesn't matter if you don't have the voices turned on for this because I'm actually going to be using an oscilloscope. So you connect the oscilloscope to pin 10 of the voltage controlled filter. Uh, if the uh, if the little legs of the pins are left on, sometimes when people work on them they cut them off, but uh, it's helpful to, to leave those on so you can uh, have something to grip onto for these calibrations. And the trimmer that we're going to be adjusting is R22, which is uh, this one right here, VCF CVR. Uh, this is one that I actually replaced this trimmer during, uh, during the restoration, so it def this definitely needs to be calibrated. So what we're trying to do with this calibration is when we press a key, and again I have uh, all the, the voice selection switches turned off so we're not going to hear a sound, uh, but you see when I press a key the uh, oscilloscope trace deflects from, from zero. And uh, the goal here is to get that to uh, that deflection as, as little as possible. So right now we're like we're like about one one division deflection. Now I'm like half a division def deflection, so I'm headed the right way. Maybe I'll uh, zoom in here on the scope. So now I'm at a 50 millivolt uh, per division, and I'm getting a one per uh, one. Basically, it's deflecting one one division every time I I hit it. Looks like now I've overshot. See? Looks like this uh, 50, a little under 50 millivolts is it's about as good as it's going to get. Uh, so now uh, that control voltage uh, offset's been been calibrated. 
So I'm going to dial in the patch for the next calibration, which is what they call VCF Cal, or the uh, it's the frequency calibration for the voltage control filter. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn uh, everything down. Uh, resonance um, is the only thing that's uh, that's that's going to be up. Um, so we're going to we're going to be adjusting this again with the oscilloscope, and we're going to connect to the same point that we did before, uh, pin 10 of the 4075 submodule. The only thing different in this setup is uh, I have uh, clipped a 33K resistor uh, between pins 10 and pin 2 of the voltage control filter. Uh, that's the procedure that they describe in the service manual. And we wind up getting a, uh, a sine wave on our oscilloscope. And uh, the period of that is going to be the adjustment that we make. And I should also point out that the trimmer that we're going to adjust is this one, R16 frequency calibration. So here's that sine wave uh, zoomed out so we can see a few repetitions of it. And I'm using the uh, frequency counting uh, features of the oscilloscope. And I see that I have a, a 10 point... Uh, this, this frequency counter on this oscilloscope is much more stable than the, the measurements one here. This is bouncing between like 10.1 hertz and 10.3 hertz. This, it can't read it because it's less than 15 hertz. But we need to adjust this for a 16 hertz sine wave. So we're looking for a uh, narrower pulse, essentially. So uh, I'm at 12, 13, 14, 15. Now my frequency counter up here is, uh, is giving me an accurate reading, 15.46. Uh, it's hard with these single turn trimmers to adjust it on the nose, uh, but I'm gonna do it as gently as I can to get it as close to what it should be as possible. I'm at 16.08, 16.02, and now I just overshot it, 15.6. Again, you have to be really gentle with these single turn trimmers. 16.06. O2 and I am going to call it at 16.02 Hertz so that's uh, as close as I think I can get it to the 16 Hertz that uh, that uh, it needs to be. So the next calibration we're going to make is to the synth VCA CVR. It's on this board, the synthesizer control board and that is the synthesizer voltage controlled amplifier control voltage rejection so the offset for the control voltage to the VCA this is the patch that you dial in so on the uh, on this uh, this part of the panel here you have everything down the de de uh, the decay is three quarters of the way up and then up here you have everything all the way to the left with the exception of uh, master volume which is all the way up and the uh, thing to note is the synthesizer is, is turned all the way to synthesizer in the mix. So what, you're, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to get rid of uh, the offset for the VCA for the synthesizer voices. Uh, all the voices, uh, again, can be turned off because we're going to be doing this with the oscilloscope, not with our ear. And the point that we're going to be measuring with our oscilloscope is this uh, third pin, the bottom center pin of the XLR output. So that's the high output. Uh, we have it switched to high, and it's connected to the to the output pin of the XLR jack. And I've just connected the uh, probe to my oscilloscope there. So the trimmer that we're going to be adjusting to uh, to uh, calibrate the VCA uh, offset is this one right here. So there's a little hole in the PCB, and you can take a uh, screwdriver, stick it through there, and adjust the trimmer from underneath. So just like with the uh, uh, voltage controlled filter offset, we're going to be trying to get a minimum deflection on the oscilloscope when we hit uh, a key. In particular, hit the high keys. Uh, that's going to, to be best for calibration. So let's see. Uh, that made it a lot worse. Now I 
I pulled her shot. That is pretty good. That is as good as it's going to get. So now we've ca uh, calibrated the VCA of the synthesizer. So the final calibration that we need to make is to the three trimmers on the phaser board. So there's three delay lines here on the phaser board and each of them needs to be calibrated um, uh, separately. So uh, this is the, the basic setup. Uh, so I've got this set up for the first delay line uh, which they call HFO Cal 1. So high frequency oscillator calibration number one. Uh, so the, the setup for this is uh, you connect what they call a test point four to ground. So basically I'm jumping from where the power comes in to the power supply to uh, the equivalent of the test point four which is on the bottom of the circuit board and doesn't, doesn't do you much good during this calibration unless you unscrew the phaser board and mess with it there. But I've clipped it to this, uh, this diode here um, so that's uh, making that ground connection and then you monitor test point five with an oscilloscope and the point that I've connected it to there is uh, pin three or four of this uh, this uh, IC 106 um, the phase lock loop uh, CMOS chip and then on the oscilloscope we're going to be calibrating this to get the uh, correct frequency so again I'm using the frequency counting feature of my oscilloscope you could use a frequency counter uh, whatever equipment you have available, but you do need test equipment to make this calibration properly. You can't do it by ear. So the service manual says for uh, for delay line one, we're looking for a uh, a frequency of 75 kilohertz, uh, and uh, right now we've got a frequency of 87.8 kilohertz. So we're we're going to need to adjust this trimmer to get this as close to 75 kilohertz as we can. So we're making this bigger. So we're at 72 kilohertz, 73.7, 74, 74.5, 75.07 which is uh, probably as good as this can get with a single turn trimmer. So now we're going to uh, we're going to connect this ground to the next delay lines diode and we're going to move the oscilloscope probe over to the next delay lines IC. So we're on delay line 2 now and the service manual says we're looking for a frequency of 46.5 kilohertz. We're at 45.0 kilohertz, so there's room for a little bit of improvement. Uh, so we need to make this this direction very small nudging of the of the trimmer makes the value jump quite a bit. This can be improved if you replace the trimmers. Um, I have a replacement uh, kit of trimmers available on my website. Uh, I've replaced some of the trimmers in this keyboard already. So that we're at 46.41 kilohertz, which is uh, is probably as close as we can get. So now we're going to move on to delay line three. Just move this setup over over one. So we're on delay line three now, and we're looking for a frequency of 82 kilohertz, and we're at uh, 82.5 kilohertz. So probably even just barely touching this is going to overshoot it, but I'm going to give it a shot. 82, yeah, 80. I barely put any pressure on this trimmer. I'm at 81.94, so that's uh, that's improved and that's uh, as close as we can get it. So uh, now we have finished calibrating the phaser. And with that we have got this uh, ARP Omni 2 calibrated to factory spec. Uh, so this is uh, the synth sound. Um, with uh, just the frequency uh, with the filter all the way open uh, and uh, we've also calibrated the uh, the chorus phaser so it's phasing now to factory specification um, and there's no thump uh, heard uh, when we press any any notes uh, or or when all the voices are off um, and and this is good to go. Um, so this is Synth Chaser saying thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post in the comments or.
contact me through my website, synthchaser.com. Thanks again. Bye.